guys, welcome back to another Bookmas Day. Today I want to talk about books that I've given five stars to that I haven't at least talked about very much on this channel. Some of these I don't even know if I've ever really mentioned. Some definitely haven't been given their time in the limelight. And these are all books, to my knowledge, I'm pretty sure they're all books that I've read before I was on booktube. So therefore I feel like I struggle more with knowing how to explain the books because I haven't had this like practiced little synopsis um, for the books and then also it's been at least three years since I've read these so my descriptions might not be super in-depth here which I generally try not to do anyway because I don't want to give spoilers but I want to talk about I don't even know how many 12 books oh one of these I definitely know I did read during booktube but I haven't talked about it for a long time. So 12 books that I've given five stars to that I feel like need a little bit more time in the spotlight today. So how I give five stars is very personal. Sometimes it has to do with how I feel while I'm reading the book. Sometimes it has to do with an ending. Like a book could be like a solid four star book and then the ending just blows me away and that makes it a five star book. There's a variety of different things that come into play but I'm not very systematic like some people will rate the writing and then they'll rate I don't know what they all rate rate various various different things and then tally that and then come up with their star rating based on that I don't care that much for me a reading is a lot of how I feel when I'm reading and I want to read books that I like and I want to have books to recommend this last year I haven't made, like created any stats looked at any stats so I don't know exactly but when I was just looking through all my five stars on Goodreads, a good portion of them have come from this last year. So I'm not going to be talking about those. But I think it just goes to show that you guys are recommending really great books to me. And that I'm slowly beginning to figure out my reading taste. And also that I'm willing to quit books that are not very good so that I have more time for good books. So I have a five of the books in my possession and then the other ones I don't actually own. So we'll just go in the order random order here. The first one is Rain Rain by Anne M. Martin. She is the author of The Babysitter's Club. This is a middle grade book about a girl named Rose. She's obsessed with homonyms. She has Asperger's and I don't know this book was the first middle grade book that I read that really touched my heart and I felt like there's this whole other world to middle grade books that I didn't realize. I thought all middle grade was Babysitter's Club-esque. But in this book, our main character Rose, her dog whose name is Rain, uh, goes missing and yeah it's just an interesting look at how she deals with that, especially with her Asperger's and it, it really touched my heart and it really made me dive into really good middle grade books. So this book really holds a special place in my heart for that reason. And then I wanted to include an L.M. Montgomery here and this is one that does not get enough spotlight. This is the story girl. So this is actually a, a duology. There's the story girl and then the golden road and we're following Sarah Stanley who is going out to, to I don't know where she's actually from, um, but she's going out to live with her cousins for I think it's two years and we get to experience Avonlea through her eyes not being someone that's born there. She's also, she's a storyteller, so she is very creative and imaginative. And uh, if you, I don't know if this is just a Canadian thing, but growing up there was a TV show called Road to Avonlea, and it's based off of this book, or this book and The Golden Road. And they're pretty much, each chapter is individual stories of scenarios that happen, and Sarah puts a spin on things to make them more creative and more fun and yeah this is one of my favorite Ellen Montgomery books so I knew this one had to make the list because I don't get to talk about it enough. Next up is a dystopian. This is The Giver. This is a very tiny little book I would say upper middle grade lower YA um, kind of for like the age range um, and it is kind of considered a classic although it hasn't actually been in publication that long. I think 90s in the 90s? 93. Uh, so it's a dystopian world where so much of it gets, like with dystopian stories, I feel like so much of it gets revealed as you go. I don't know how much to say, uh, but we're following Jonas and when he becomes a certain age, he is given this ability to be the giver. So he goes 
to the one giver that they have and he's supposed to get the memories from this giver and it's it's very fascinating. Uh, there is actually four books in the series which I think is not well known. I think most people only know of The Giver but this one is definitely the best of the series. This is a middle grade fantasy that I really enjoy and never talk about. It's Princess Academy by Shannon Hale. So she actually has quite a few. She has a, This is a series and she has the Goose Girl series as well which I also enjoyed. That one's more like YA. Uh, so in this one we are on a mountain with a girl named Miri and her family. I feel like they're kind of like the dwarves. Like it never says that they're dwarves but they they're miners and they have a lot to do with the stone in the mountain and then it's foretold that the prince of the kingdom is going to marry one of the girls from Miri's village so all the girls get sent from their little mining village to this place to learn how to be a princess, hence Princess Academy. I feel like the title makes this feel a lot more of a girl, like, like it's a lot more of a girly book than it really is. I feel like this is a fantasy story for tomboys, which is definitely what I was as a kid, so that might be why I really enjoy this one so much. Although as much as I love it, I've actually only read the first book in the series, so Maybe I should continue this series. Then we've got The Mysterious Benedict Society. So many people recommend this to me either here or on my like homeschool channel for my kids. Um, I don't really talk about this series much, but I have enjoyed it. I actually don't know if I've read all of them. I think I've read number one, two, three, and there's another one. Uh, but in this one, there's an ad in the newspaper uh, looking for unique children. I don't remember what the ad actually says. It says, are you gifted? Are you a gifted child looking for special opportunities? And then we've got some characters that respond to that ad. They have to go through some trials and we've got some leftover kids in the end and they form what is the Mysterious Benedict Society. And there's lots of different adventures that ensue. This is actually like a really thick book for middle grade. All the books in the series are equally as thick and I've enjoyed what I have read of this series. Okay, now let's move away from middle grade for a little bit here. The next one I wrote down is The Forgotten Garden. This is by Kate Morton. Now, the one thing I have said before of Kate Morton's books, I have actually one of hers on my historical fiction TBR over there. They're often like, I find a hundred pages too long. Um, I've enjoyed all of them. I think I've given like all of them four stars. This one's a five star though. So hers are always dual timeline and in this one we follow two different women and there's like this element of this fairy tale story book and I don't remember everything that ensued. There's a lot of like English coast. I think Kate Morton's actually Australian. So often one of her timelines is in Australia and one is in England which I just I'm there for all the vibes. They have that like cold blustery seaside vibes to me. Um, yeah and I really enjoyed this one out of all of them, this is the one I've enjoyed the most. Now, a con contemporary book, which I feel like I never actually read or recommend them when I do actually read them, but A Man Called Uva is one of my favorite Frederick Bachman. I feel like his books have been very hit or miss for me, but I loved this one. So we follow a man named Uva, and they're turning this into a movie. I'm not sure when it's supposed to come out. They've changed the name to A Man Called Otto, and Tom Hanks is playing. Otto, which is like he's like the only actor I know so I'm definitely gonna watch it eventually like three years after it's been out probably yeah so we've got Uva who he's a curmudgeon he lives in this and it must be like townhouses or something that they live in because there's there's standards to the to the community the housing and he wants everything followed like exactly as it's supposed to be um, he is cranky and he's, he's not the best neighbor, but this story, I came away with so many lessons on how being a good neighbor can change people's lives and thoroughly enjoyed it. The audio, I listened to the audiobook um, and I like literally had tears streaming down my face at the end. So I would recommend it. This is the one book that I'm pretty sure I read while I was on book two, but like right at the beginning. It's The Delusion by Laura... I forget her last name, but thanks to the picture, you can see it. Uh, this this reminds me a lot of The Oath. It's like a Christian supernatural fiction where our main character, he ends up drinking some water out of a well and he can see the spiritual world. So it reminds me of a lot of like Frank Peretti's writing. And 
this is a series I feel like the series didn't each book was a little bit less good in my mind um, but I like thinking about what is all going on in the spiritual world and being able to read a book where you can kind of you can like visually see it in the book is really fascinating um, yeah and I like to see how that changed some of his choices he made and I thought it was a really good read. This is a historical fiction I think that everybody has loved. Um, I read it quite a few years ago now back when I was just reading books that were popular because I didn't know what I like to read and it is All the Light We Cannot See and this is a World War II historical fiction. One of our main characters is blind? Oh like I think I read it in 2015 or something so and I haven't really talked about it since except this is one of those books that people that don't read have read so I feel like maybe it's one I should reread so I can have conversations when I come across people that have read this book but everyone that has read it has loved it okay apparently I can't count because one of my books on my list here is one of my physical books so I think this is only a list of 11 the next one is a historical fiction upper middle grade lower YA and that is A Night Divided by Jennifer A. Nielsen. So this is, takes place, starts on the night the Berlin Wall went up and our main character, her and her mom were on one side of the wall and her dad and her brother or brothers were visiting someone else and they're now on the other side of the wall. And it's their story of trying to get to each other. And yeah, I bought this one for my daughter for Christmas but also I'm gonna reread it um I think that's my favorite of Jennifer A. Nielsen's historical fiction books although I've really enjoyed all of hers that I've read so far and then the last one is Tainted by Morgan L. Bussey if I do a science fiction recommendations video here soon that will be on it uh, but I haven't talked about it in a long time I think so this is kind of very 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 loosely like a Frankenstein retelling Christian science fiction Frankenstein if yeah uh, we follow a woman young woman who her father is some kind of scientist and he has used her for experiments in the past and hence she is the Frankenstein monster uh, person and this now that I'm looking back it was like one of the first science fiction type books that I read other than some of the classics um, and I'd really like to reread it because I really enjoyed it but I think I would enjoy it more now knowing the genre a little bit more. I think there was something else I was going to say about it but now I don't remember uh, but yes I really I flew through both of them. They're a duology and I flew through them really fast so I would recommend those as well. So those are just some random books in a bunch of different genres that I read before booktube or right at the beginning of my journey that I rated five stars that I don't talk about enough. Actually when I was going through my five star ratings from before booktube there was a lot of non-fiction. It was making me realize how much from for many years there all I read was non-fiction. Um, so it's just interesting to see how those this last year I read barely any non-fiction and then a few years ago that's pretty much all I was reading. So let me know like what are some of your books that you rated five stars from like five years ago that you still remember them as being really good but you never really re think to recommend them to people. That's a challenge. Find a book like that and let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for being here guys and I'll be back again tomorrow.